In this video, we're going to expand our knowledge of writing proofs that involve parallelograms. Once you either know that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram or have proven that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, you can then use any of its properties in your proof. So for instance, you know that once a quadrilateral is a parallelogram, both pairs of its opposite sides must be parallel. Both pairs of its opposite sides must be congruent. Both pairs of its opposite angles must be congruent. Consecutive or adjacent angles are supplementary. The diagonals bisect each other. And the diagonals divide that parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So again, once you either know that a particular quadrilateral is a parallelogram or have proven that a particular quadrilateral is a parallelogram, all of the proofs in the box up at the top of page 13 are fair game. All right, let's go ahead and jump in. In example one, we're given the fact that JKLM is a parallelogram. And since I really don't have a way to mark or show a parallelogram in my picture, the way that I'm going to kind of remind myself that this fella is a parallelogram is I'm going to take my highlighter and I'm going to highlight that figure. I could mark all the properties in the diagram, but that would make my diagram very, very busy because there's so many of those properties to mark. And I want to keep things relatively as simple as possible so that I can see exactly what pieces or what parts I'm going to need to use in order to prove. So again, that highlighter is my way of indicating to myself that that fella is a parallelogram with all the properties that go along with the parallelogram. The other piece of information that's given to me in this problem is that segments JO and OL are congruent. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those. My goal or my mission is to prove that segment OP is congruent to segment OQ. So OP is that red segment right there. OQ is that one. So since I'm trying to prove a pair of congruent segments, I'm thinking to myself, if I could show that a pair of triangles that contains those segments are congruent, I could use CPCTC to prove the segments themselves. So in other words, I'm thinking, prove those red triangles congruent. Well, I already have a pair of congruent sides. I have a pair of angles that are vertical angles there at point O. And because this yellow figure is a parallelogram, I know that top side and bottom side are parallel, which along this transversal that connects J and L is going to make angle 1 congruent to angle 2. Therefore, now my red triangles are congruent by angle side angle, and CPCTC will tell me that segment OP is congruent to segment OQ. So that's kind of um, the gist or the direction that my proof here is going to take. And I think to be different, I'm going to make this one a two-column proof. But if you'd prefer, you may feel free, as always, to write a flow proof. It doesn't make a difference. Either one is considered a formal proof. So I'm going to start out with a parallelogram. I know that's a true statement because it's given to us to be a true statement. Now the reason that's important is because that fella is a parallelogram, I know that the top side, JK, must be parallel to the bottom side, ML. And that's because the parallelogram has opposite sides that are parallel. And I'm going to cite statement one because statement one was where I had the parallelogram. Because those two are parallel, I know that angles 1 and 2 have to be congruent to each other. And the parallel lines that I talked about up in statement 2 have congruent alternate interior angles. I'm going to label those vertical angles at O, 3, and 4. And I know that angles 3 and 4 are congruent to each other because they're vertical angles. So there's my two pairs of angles. I need to now talk about my pair of sides, J, O, and O, L, that were given to me. And as always, be careful when you name your triangles. So I can call the first one J-O-P, but when I name the second one, I've got to make sure that I match up. So angle J in the top triangle corresponds and is congruent to angle O 
and the second triangle, so on and so forth. And now that those two triangles are congruent, I know that all of their corresponding parts must be congruent as well. So that's a nice little proof that integrates the properties of a parallelogram in order to really write about a proof about triangles. All right, the next one I'm going to move on to, and this one too, I'm being given that one of the particular figures in my diagram is a parallelogram. So like the first example, I'm going to go ahead and grab my highlighter, and I'm going to highlight figure A, B, C, D. So that's just a reminder to me that he's a parallelogram with all the goodies and properties that go along with the parallelogram. The other piece of given information that we're told is a true statement in this particular problem is that segment AD has to be congruent to segment DE. And we're being asked to prove that the other quadrilateral in this picture, DBCE, has to be a parallelogram. So I have lots of different ways to prove that something's a parallelogram. I only have to find one and fulfill one of those requirements. And you can look back in your notes if you've forgotten what those ways of proving that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram actually are. I do know that because this yellow figure is a parallelogram, I know that both of his opposite sides are parallel. So I know that the left side and the right side are parallel. And that's helpful to me because the left side of the parallelogram on top and the left side of the parallelogram or the quadrilateral on bottom both are on the same line segment. So I know the left sides and the right sides of this quadrilateral D, B, C, E have to be parallel. The other good piece of information I know based upon the fact that the yellow fella is a parallelogram is I know his opposite sides are not only parallel, but they're congruent to one another. So therefore, the left side of the yellow quad parallelogram has to be congruent to the right side of the yellow parallelogram. And all of a sudden now, if I look at this guy DBCE that I'm trying to show as a parallelogram, he has left side and right side parallel. He also has left side and right side congruent. So in other words, he's got the same pair of sides, both parallel and congruent. And you should know at this point that that is one of the factors that makes a quadrilateral a parallelogram. So that's kind of my strategy, is to show that the left side and the right side of quadrilateral D, B, C, E are both parallel and congruent. So I'm going to start out my proof here by talking about the fact that this given fella is a parallelogram. I know that's a true statement because it's given to me to be a true statement. And because he's a parallelogram, that actually gives me a couple different useful pieces of information. When I write that his left side is parallel to his right side, I'm going to extend his left side to include segment DE because that's part of what I'm going to use to prove that D, B, C, E is a parallelogram. And I can take and extend any line segment. So segment AE has to be parallel to segment BC because a parallelogram has opposite sides that are parallel. The other piece of useful information that I'm going to take from there is that segment AD has to be congruent to segment BC. And I know that because a parallelogram has opposite sides that are congruent. And the other piece of knowledge that I haven't used yet is this second given, the fact that AD is congruent to DE. And that's where I'm going to go next. And if these two pieces are true, I know that segment BC and segment DE have to be congruent. And that's by substitution. So at this point in my proof, I've talked about the fact that the left side and the right side are parallel. I've discussed the fact that the left side and the right side are congruent. Because now we have the same pair of sides, both parallel and congruent, 
we can go ahead and conclude that our figure is indeed a parallelogram. And that's because a quadrilateral with the same pair of sides that are both parallel and congruent is a parallelogram. So as always, I want you to take a minute and I want you to think about everything that you've just seen here on page 13. Wrap your brain around that information and summarize the key takeaways and the important understandings. Once you've done that, see if you can apply what you've learned to solve the question on page 14.